I picked up this old rusty 1931 North Carolina license plate off of eBay. I got it fairly, fairly cheap. Um, I was going to try to refurbish it for a friend of mine that has a 1931 Model A. Um, I don't know my process yet, so you're going to learn along with me. Uh, it, this is pretty solid, fairly solid. I mean, it is crusty, and it's got a few, a few bends in it, but nothing, nothing horrible. Um, I have a sandblaster. I could put it in and and get most of this off, but I didn't want to eat away too much of the the original metal. So I'm going to try to soak it in in a vinegar solution for a couple of days and uh, see if it loosens up this rust. I'll go at it with a wire brush and clean it up. I have this plastic bin, and this is probably going to work out just right. It doesn't quite fit flat on the bottom which is good um, if I if I set it in here like so it's about a half inch gap underneath the license plate that'll let the solution get on top and bottom and the rust should uh, fall off of it into the bottom of the container This is from 21 hours of soaking. I'm outside because this stuff smells pretty strong. Coming off pretty nice. I'm gonna I'm gonna give this a scrub and uh, see how it looks. Coming off pretty good. Yeah, even the back side, which was even rustier, is uh, dissolving good. That was 30% vinegar, extra strong. Everything is coming off nicely. Let me finish this up and I'll show you the results. Well, that worked out really well. Um, that was only 23, uh, 21 hours of soaking. And uh, you can see on the back side, it, it really cleaned it up to the base metal pretty good. The front side still has some remnants of, uh, of rust that's, there's still, the, the uh, metal itself has pitting in it here, but it, it took all the, uh, <coughs> all the rust and uh, old paint and everything else off. Well, that vinegar solution cleaned it up pretty good, but there's still surface rust, and there's um, on this on this part there's a lot of pitting. So I'm going to go over it with a, um, a wire wheel on a drill uh, just to clean it up a little better before I start uh, bent, beating out the um, the dents. Well, after all the cleanup, I could see some of the damage. I've got some pinholes, um, you know, in this area here and here, but it's um, pretty wrinkly. I'm going to try to straighten this up the best I can. I made a little um, piece of wood to go. There's a, there's a recess on the back side. Um, so that would be a flat plane. I'm going to attach it to this with the two little screw holes here and try to work this flat plane down. I'm going to, I want to use wood uh, to hit it with because if you're doing metal on metal, it could actually stretch the metal and then we get uh, oil canning and buckling and m could make things worse. So I'm going to 
I'm going to work on this a little bit by hand. After stripping the rust and the paint off, I found that this area here and around, around here is like Swiss cheese. It's very paper thin. You can see with a, a light behind it, all the, all the pinholes are all over the place. This is not really a great candidate for refurbishing, but I'm, what I'm gonna do is on the back side of this plate, I'm gonna build up some uh, kitty hair, uh, some chopped strand resin, uh, build up a little bit of thickness behind here, and um, fill in all these pock marks the best I can, then I'll spray some high build primer on it and try to sand it as smooth as I can. But everything is, Got, uh, you know, pock marks. Pretty nasty. I reinforce this very thin area around here with some chopped strand fiberglass and fared that off uh, just to give it some strength. And uh, also have put the chopped strand on the back side. I left uh, a little bit of thickness there to give it some structural integrity. And then I use this uh, polyester glazing putty uh, on the on the surface here, all the pitted pock marks, uh, the worst ones anyhow. I didn't get everything, and now I'm going to spray some high build primer, and that'll let me sand it uh, as smooth as I need. I put a coat of high build primer on, uh, helped to fill in the pock marks and to even it out, sitting it sitting it horizontally, it flowed out pretty well and smooth things over. I'm gonna let it cure and then maybe even bake it in the oven a little bit to uh, get it good and hard. Okay, I have a couple coats of black enamel on here and I even put it in the oven to bake a little bit, hopefully make it a little bit harder or more thoroughly cured. Um, it's not perfect by any means, but it's gonna be serviceable for a daily driver, 1931 Model A my friend Darson has. What I'm going to do now is um, the letters. I need to paint with this uh, sunburst yellow. But what I'm going to do is use this brayer. It's a hard rubber or semi-hard rubber roller loaded up with the paint and roll over top of the, the lettering. Uh, just so I don't make a mess out of it. I'm, I am going to mask off, you know, the open field areas here so that if I was to tilt it, I don't accidentally make a mess where I don't want it. Gonna load up the brayer with some paint. Okay, well using this brayer was a fail for me. It, uh, it did not put enough paint on, the coverage was not very good. The base material had, you know, still had pock marks and irregularities, so it rides on the high, high spots. On a, on a brand new plate, it would work uh, with a thicker paint too. This Rust-Oleum that I was using, even straight out of the can, 
is a little bit thin for doing something like that. What I ended up doing that did work, after I made a big mess, is using uh, one of these little tiny foam brushes. I bought a pack of them from Walmart of assorted art brushes and, and whatnot. And, uh, but just a tiny foam brush is what I used. I loaded it up pretty good and dab uh, a pretty good amount of paint down the middle of all the lettering and then try to work it uh, to the edge carefully, uh, which worked pretty good, but uh, not perfectly, You'd get a little bit over. What I ended up doing is, is just going with that, uh, trying to be as careful as I could, but um, you know, not, not getting crazy about it. Um, and also on these smaller letters, I would, you know, trying to dab on top of the um, raised part of the lettering. Uh, took a little bit of patience. Uh, ended up using afterwards, you know, there was a little bit of um, overage there, using one of these paint pens, which um, is an oil-based paint. This was black, of course. I tried, uh, I, I did buy some yellow ones too. It didn't match, it wasn't, the color was not right, but I was able to use uh, one of the new ones because they were, I bought a five pack of them, they were $10 for a five pack. I took one of the new ones that had a um, unused tip on it and dipped it into my Rust-Oleum and then I was able to um, more accurately dispense it where I needed to. But, but uh, what I ended up doing though for getting sharper lettering is going back afterwards with the black uh, on the flat part up against the, um, the lettering. This is what one of the tips looks like when it's unused. It's, uh, to operate it, it's got paint in here and you pump it a few times by pushing on the tip and that, that pumps paint into the tip. But, um, so with the black one, of course, I used the black paint and you could eat, it, it guides itself along the outline pretty easily. So you could basically trace each letter and it would give you a sharp definition. And then you come back and, and uh, touch up whatever else you need. Now you could also take one of these that, like I said, was not used and dip it into your Rust-Oleum and, you know, do your, your yellow a little more accurately. Or you could use one of the little teeny brushes if you've got patience and steady hand. Anyhow, this is going to be uh, a usable plate now. Uh, 94 years old, 93 years old. Um, metal, you saw how uh, rusted it was to start with. It would have been a wall hanger uh, otherwise. So this puts it back onto a 1931 Model A, and uh, I think that's a win. I'd just like to say a few words to everybody, my friends on YouTube, old and new. Um, it's been a minute since I've uh, posted any videos. I've had a, a rough, uh, the last year has been pretty rough. Uh, I lost my wife a year ago. Uh, after a long illness and then I ended up with uh, problems in both of my kidneys. I had cancer in uh, one kidney and another tumor in my other kidney. had to have uh, major operations for that. And then I had melanoma, big uh, melanoma removed from my abdomen. Um, you know, at my lowest point I had lost uh, over 60 pounds. Um, during all this, I got COVID after my last operation on my kidney, uh, so it was pretty rough. Uh, but uh, I've healed up well, and uh, God has performed some miracles for me. Uh, my second kidney operation, uh, I have been praying, and as as my friends and family have done as well. Um, I'd like to thank all of you for your prayers and. Uh, praying that God would heal me and, and actually 
uh, I have to tell you about this miracle of the second, the second operation. Um, I had seen three separate images of my tumor in this uh, one kidney, nearly an inch in diameter, very well defined. And one of the uh, images was like three weeks before my surgery, and it was clear as could be. Um, when I, I went, went in for my surgery, I was already uh, in declining health from having just had the other, recovering from the other surgery a couple months prior. Uh, my weight was way down, but uh, you know I've been praying and uh, that God would heal me. And uh, when I w woke up from in the recovery room, my daughter was standing over my bed, crying. That uh, the surgeon went in there. And there was no tumor. God had healed me. Unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, my surgeon did not get the memo because he uh, couldn't believe it. And uh, he went, he said, well, I'm already in here. So he cut out, uh, he went using old images, cut out the section of, t of kidney that we saw the tumor and uh, removed it, had the operation uh, in recovery, I got caught COVID another couple of weeks uh, um, recovery because of that. And, uh, but uh, when I had the follow-up visit with my urologist uh, and they had the pathology report on the tissue they removed, there was nothing there. It had, it was like uh, slightly fibrous. It had, was dissolved, had uh, metabolized and into the kidney and, and disappeared. But that was one of the many miracles that God had blessed me with. And uh, I want to thank my friends uh, for praying for me and my family. And, uh, and thank you all. And, and uh, thank you.